Okay, hey everybody, this is LMP Games, and we are back to do another First Impressions. Tonight we're doing for Demon Souls. Now it is Demon's Souls, not Demon Souls. Though, I'll portray this Demon Souls a lot. People call it Demon Souls, so Demon's Souls. And it's kind of a weird name, but... So... This isn't exactly a First Impression, because I've played this game before. On the PS3 when it came out. Over at a friend's house. For about a couple hours. Don't really know much about it. Um, I've seen this remake played a bit. Um, on various channels. But I haven't played it myself, which is, you know... Playing a Souls-like is much different than watching it played. Now, in fact, that's true of most games. Um, so I can't really... You know, from what I've seen, I can't really say what... I feel about the different things, you know. Um, I don't think that would be the exception would be the story. But everything else is kind of like, you know, you got to experience it first. So this is the remake of Demon's Souls, uh, which came out, I think, in 2009 on the PS3. Um, was the original Souls game, um, or at least one of the original ones that put all the mechanics together for it. I think there were a couple of predecessors before this that had been made. <clears throat> this is the first one that kind of cemented the Souls genre, though. Um... This is a remake made by Bluepoint, um, and they really, from what you know, from the trailers and what I've seen, they did uh, did themselves. The game looks really good, um, but I'm gonna get to see it first hand now in actual proper fidelity without bit rates crushing everything into nothingness. Um, so here is what's on the back of the case: uh, Discover where the journey began, master the arts of sorcery and war, become the slayer of demons. Experience the original brutal challenge completely remade from the ground up, presented in stunning visual quality with enhanced performance. This is the world of uh, Boltaria as you've never seen it before. <clears throat> so, that is what's on the case. Let's, uh, so, again, this is a Souls game. So, what I'm looking for in a Souls game, uh, we're looking at the mechanics heavily, we're going to be looking at the um, level design heavily. And, um, to a lesser extent, the audio, and, um, another lesser extent, the story. But yeah, game mechanics and, like, the level design as part of the art design are going to be the big things we'll be looking at here. So let's go ahead and get into it and uh, see what we've got. I'm gonna let the intro rock. Uh, we'll leave those all the same. Uh, we'll throw on subtitles, throw on the backing. On the first day. Man was granted a soul, and with it, clarity. On the second day. Upon earth was planted an irrevocable poison. A soul devouring demon. Figure out the audio levels here. We got yeeted, or this character did not. That's us or not. I think that's um, Infinity Blade came out after this, right?
I'm pretty sure. Got uh, spirits open. If I'm not mistaken, this is the last boss of the game. I think it's called the Dragon God. <clears throat> Some real alien inspired crap. In it. Like the mouth in the mouth. The game looks incredible. I'm not sure if this is in uh, Unreal Engine 5 or not. I think this came out before 5 actually was released, so I don't think it is. I'm not sure what engine it's using. It does a pretty damn good job. So we got uh, just two body types to choose from. Um, I should go ahead and roll and figure out if we're going to do a male or female character here. We'll leave it to the dice gods. As we do with all such things. Grab a d20. So, 10 or higher. Well, 11 or higher would be type A. Um, lower than 11 to 10 or 1. Ten, 1 to 10 would be type B. And 17. Ah, okay. So, um, player's name. Um, let's go with, uh... Uh, Latia. Um, class, go much different classes. So, knight rather than... A knight class of rather advanced area of a rather advanced area of Southern Militaria. Fitted with sturdy armor and depth at close terrain, and close combat ready for ensuing situations. Um, so main attributes are strength and endurance. Intelligence. Well, strength is the main, I guess. And then the secondary are intelligence, endurance, faith. Really, actually, the, ma the main ones are strength, endurance, and vitality. Once you're put into it that this class, I believe. Uh, soldier. Low class soldier that always stands on the front line of battlegrounds. With high, uh, high vitality, durable armor equipped for approaching the uh, dangers. <coughs> vitality 14, 12 endurance and strength. Eh, decent starting class. And we got the hunter. Uh, specialist on outdoor activities. Wields an axe and a bow, well versed to deal with both manners of danger. So, ranged and close combat. Um, okay. Priest. Soldier of the church that believes in God of this world. Adept at close range combat and control upon sort of a restorative miracle. Okay, magician. Uh, commoner that efficiently learned spells, skillfully commands magic spells. High intelligence to deal combat uh, with combat afar. Uh, Wanderer. Not the equipped soldier that continues uh, a nameless journey. Wields a falchion and dagger to handle situations requiring quick wits and fast reactions. Um, Dexterity is the high one there. Uh, Barbarian. The big stick character. <clears throat> Class, rather. Person of, from a part of civilization, though lacking in gear, pure strength matched with high health, wielding a powerful club. Um, so yeah, Vitality 15, Strength 15, Endurance 13, um, hit things hard, take a lot of damage, kind of class. It's kind of like a, essentially glass cannon. Uh, Thief, probably the hardest class in the game, I would assume. Um, given that, I think they just use daggers, sorry. Thieves are added by royalty to get your dirty jobs, specialize in crafty and their tactics over conventional methods. Uh, Temple Knight. Special knight that protects the temple of God, heavily clad and equipped for crowd control, who deals upon sort of miracle. And royalty. Person of royal descent who has officially learned spells. Commands the spell uh, Soul Arrow with benefits of rare ring. This is like a, a more powerful mage, I guess, potentially. 
Um, let's uh, let's just go to soldier. I'll start a basic. Let's go with a basic class. Um, starting gift. Uh, let's go with the providential ring. It gives you more item discovery. I can actually change the appearance. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do all this stuff for the first impressions. But it has a, a fairly detailed character creator, it seems. King Alant the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. Hmm. That is until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. Okay. But Valifax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. The old King Alant had roused the old one, the great beast below the Nexus, from its eternal slumber, and that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing. That's a crazy thing over there. The demons hunt down men, claim their souls. Those who lose their souls lose also their minds. The mad attack the sane, and chaos reigns. Valifax also spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force. Hmm. And the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors lured by the possibilities braved the fisher to breach the accursed land. But none have returned. The awe of the twin fangs. Yet the silent chief. Saint Urbain. All these named kind of. Skurva the Wanderer. Characters. The sixth Saint Astria with her knight Garl Vinland. And Sage Freak the Visionary. Colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. Interesting. <clears throat> so it's spreading to the rest of the world, too. Will eventually okay. swallow all lands near and far. Hmm. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Oh, has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? Hmm. Okay. Oh, cool. I actually have, um... Haptics for each step. Let's go to second right now. I shall guide you to the fisher. Combat tutorial? So that you may lull the old one back to slumber. Maybe not. Okay, so let's look at the UI here. <clears throat> so we got, uh, I think the thing on the top, top, the far top left is the world tendency, I believe. Um, not sure what's on the icon underneath the the stamina gauges. We got uh, magic, health, stamina. Uh, we got souls over the top right. Bottom left, we got the usual um, item panel. Controls like you would expect a Souls game to control. Got messages. R1 standard attack. R2 is a heavy attack. L1 is shield bash. L2 is guard. Or L1 is guard.
Hunting for it to attack. We got multiple targets here. So there is a bit of a knockback if you get the timing right on the, the block. Can't go through there. Yes, they're going up. Some moon grass. That's right, we have um don't you need grass to heal in this game, which is kind of interesting. So down is the switch item, okay. And I guess we're going this way. So we take, well, maybe we didn't, I don't know if we took fall damage from that. I didn't notice with the, with the bar change or not. I think it changed a little bit, maybe. Potentially. Okay, I think I a couple hits there. <laughs> Teleporter. Get rocked guy. Forlorn Lorne outpost. Strong attack. We got a stronger enemy there. Actually, I think that was a human. <coughs> enemy there. Uh, L2 to parry, after parrying, repose. Definitely a timing thing. There we go. Alright, so it's kind of like visceral counters in Bloodborne. Let's level out. There's specific timing. If you match the parry to the timing, you'll get a visceral counter. Oh, we got a... Uh, Lolly boy here. We got a fat roll in this character, it seems. Wow, 51 souls on that guy. Oh, you actually have a, uh, interesting, you have a, uh, uh, hand, uh, hold mode. So you, you lose your defense, but you can probably do more damage.
You still block with um, Sword Edge, but you probably can't parry easily in this mode. And even if you do, probably does a lot of damage. So this green moon grass is not that healing. Switch weapons. I think I was getting up. Half moon grass. Okay. Unknown warrior soul. I don't think that gives you um, souls to use. Kind of like the uh, blood clods and stuff in uh, Bloodborne. <clears throat> or whatever they're called in uh, Elden Ring. Not a good area to fight in. As far as I know, there's no way to jump. God, that fat roll. Fat roll is fat. More half moon. Okay. The Vanguard demon, okay. Oof. Okay. That fat roll is going to be a problem. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. Death one. However, the Nexus traps you, shimmering in this world forever as a soul. I mean, it's not possible to win that. Um, at the moment. Okay, so this is like the nightmare from Bloodborne. So we go when we die. This is the Nexus. It holds together the northern land of Boletaria. Thou canst not quit the Nexus, but the five archstones will guide thee to the outer lands. Huh. Next seal binding. I've got some uh, characters to talk to. Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls. Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero. Hunting for demons? Try one of the arch stones. Okay. Now go. <coughs> A little bit of, little bit of uh, story there. I'm Stockpile Thomas. When 
when the scuds came. I didn't know what hit me. When I came to, I found myself here in this nexus. My wife and daughter fell victim to the demons. Hmm. But I would be worthless in battle. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. I would be happy to lighten your load and look Okay, so we can store stuff here. Okay. Best of luck to you. Storage character. Alright. Uh, Weaponsmith looks like. Mm, you knew here. Are you here for my services? The name is Baldwin. I'm just an ordinary blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons. Or forge the ones you already have. With your souls, I can eke out a living. And with my weapons, you can go on. <laughs> Not a bad deal, eh? So we have to repair equipment. Interesting. No interest, eh? Oh my, how has this happened? Has God abandoned us for King Alat? Has he lent us no proper respect? Oh, Ambassador. Okay, interesting. What's this say? Uh, Mbasa. Yeah, you get messages from different characters or different players. It's one of the interesting things about. Uh, interesting. Fighting somebody here. Visions of Beginners. Okay. Arch of the Covetous King. Uh, Boletarian Pal Palace, Gates of Boletaria. Huge castle in the heart of the Northern Kingdom of Boletaria. Hungry soldiers attack trespassers, their souls stolen by demons while attack. While nearby, dra terrible dragons have taken roost. Okay. This looks like this first area. So I'm going to try and deal with these as we'll go to like the first boss. And then you try and fight it a few times, you're gonna get an idea of the how the game plays and whatnot. It's so usually I'm gonna work with the uh, souls type game. So there's a dragon. <clears> that has got a bunch of dudes. Hunger dragon. God, audio leveling this game is insane. The dialogue is so quiet, but the sound effects are so freaking loud. I changed that somehow. Here we go. Yeah, sound effects down by half. And that should help. That takes us back, I guess, to the main place. Died there. The true demon souls starts here. Interesting, we actually have half of our health meter at the moment. I wonder if it's because we have to repair equipment. So 
So I wonder if you die if you take equipment damage or something like that. So we're kind of already at a disadvantage right now. So healing puts you at a major disadvantage. Major disadvantage. Takes a while and locks in place. Pine resin. Guess I'll go this way. Ooh, on fire. Moongrass. No clue what's down there, but I don't think I want to fall down there. It seems like a pretty steep drop. Fire bombs. Some more crescent moon grass. Got some fog here. Fog doesn't seem to immediately indicate a boss fight. Mail breaker, we're gonna do weapon. One of those types of enemies in uh, uh, Elden Ring in the castle it would just firebomb you. You had to roll through it. Nope, not today, Sunday, Jim. You don't get to throw that bomb. Oh, wow, okay.
Just have to drop into there to get that. There's no way to get up there from down here. Interesting. Okay. I wonder how you get down there. You have to fall down from a specific height. Oh, okay. Kind of like what I just did. Oh, I see. That opened it up, didn't it? It's not a, a Souls game without a boulder somewhere. Bastard sword. Some, uh, some zi uh, zippy boys over here. This one of them. Late moon grass. Okay. What's this? Time for falling down. Oh, because there's an item down there. See a guy back there. Oh, wow, that just shot me all the way down there. Oh, he's got an axe. Halberd. And stamina there. This. Good day to you. Care to look over my wares? Mostly stolen, but who's Wait, is this patches? Dragling, no, okay. Uh, so we can buy stuff. All right. Stops bleeding, okay. Go ahead. So I got a broadsword, bastard sword, um, mail breaker. Let's switch to the bastard sword. That put me overweight, though, wouldn't it? 
Is it, it's a two-handed sword, right? I can't even use it yet. I don't have enough strength to use it. That's kind of a dagger, okay. So you can't deal wield though, huh? Oh yeah, you can. Never mind. I didn't have the right, didn't have the right thing. There we go. <clears throat> so forsake the defense and go with double offense. Probably not a good idea, but uh, we'll see. I have a better roll now. This actually is better, to be honest. Oh, we're not fat rolling anymore. Oh. Okay. Um, so we just gotta run for it. I oh, know we are or, or, or fat rolling uh, forward. I don't want to throw any lockdown to get a better roll potentially. An unwarrior soul. It didn't die from falling this high. What the hell, from this high? That's kind of insane. I've died over 9,000 times. So I'm taking this as the first boss then. Maybe not. Time for partying. Oh, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay, I see. That's what they meant. Well, we didn't die, so luckily. Some bolts, um, moon grass. Oh, spears, okay.
Okay, these guys are a little bit uh, annoying. Got him. No. Oh, if I remember correct. Oh, I don't know what this is actually. I think this is the place I'm thinking of. <laughs> oh, he died from bleeding, didn't he? I don't think I'm gonna go across this. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it is or isn't, but I know there's a place where there's like a dragon that flies across. Oh, hey, dragon over there. Help. I could throw myself off the edge, though. So I'm guessing this is where we fight something. Oh, there's two dragons. There's the, the hungry boy. Um. A lot of corpses out there. That's a really small area to fight in, though. Let's uh, take a chance. <clears throat> Maybe this is just a place where we have a scene. What's this say? Dragons are near. So this person went back and died. Don't forget to press on. I don't think you fight them here. Yeah, I got those students off the edge there. Archstone shard, full moon grass. Uh, I do think if you go over where they're at, you're going to die, though. So, but they don't, you don't fight them here. I was going to say, it's too small of an area. Alright, um, so I guess we do have to go forward up over this bridge. I think it pulls the one of them over here and they like burn the people out here or something. So I remember that from when I played the game originally. I might have been watching somebody play this remake. Oh good. Okay, dragon flew off over there. Oh hell, here it comes. Didn't do anything though.
Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, crap. Fire. Well, it's just gonna stay over here, huh? Maybe we have to like lure it away and then go just run across. Always oh, something a sport. Okay, made it though. Uh, bring on the demons. Now we can't use this. Oh, okay. Hello. Okay, survived that. Barely. Soldier's shield. For the miracles. Some of these uh these messages are kinda of spoilery. Okay, we got some guys down here. So we got a slime or something behind them. Interesting. Okay. Another slime guy down there. Unknown hero soul.
I'm assuming if we get around behind them, they're vulnerable from behind. But it's hard to do. It's hard to do that on these stairs. Oh well. Wow. Oh, so they actually throw the spear. Okay. Uh, True Demon Soul starts here. <laughs> Guessing the first boss. Maybe not. Oh, we're back to the beginning. Okay, so we got a shortcut. Right, we're going to go back to the Nexus. Use our uh, souls. So that wasn't too bad. Didn't die, which is good. I mean, I cured that holy to Bloodborne and Elden Ring, to be honest. Uh, the first time I played this game, I died so many times. Just like in the very beginning here, very beginning, being part of the game, like the tutorial tutorial area. Um. I died so many times. <clears throat> okay, so... Um... So, I wonder if you strictly level up by your equipment, or if you can level up your character stats too. So I'm not exactly sure I remember how this works in this game. Where's that other, uh, the woman that was there when we got here? Where'd she go to? I'm lost. I do this is a whole thing where you throw yourself off the top of this to like, like change the world tendency. And try the Nexus. Welcome to the danger zone. Time for falling down. Uh, trim back. Go behind you. So maybe you only uh, improve by improving your gear in this one. been quite a while since I played this game. I don't remember if he had the traditional Souls leveling system or not. I'm going to assume probably not. I think that was introduced to Dark Souls. Oh, good day to you. I can forge weapons for you. We need sharpened stones too. 
we don't have. You come back alive. Okay, no, so the health is still halved. I wonder why they why your health is halved for. How do you how do you fix that? I can forge weapons for you. Like if you only have half health, the gauge should go down that far. It's kind of weird. Can I purchase those things? Those, uh... Don't think I can. Doesn't seem like it anyway. No interest, eh? So, how do I use souls, then? You came for demons? Uh, we're welcome here. You got to be able to upgrade a character somehow. I destroyed six Darkstone. And I remember that the amount of like internet rumors around that sixth stone about how if you did certain things or did something specific, you could activate it and go to a new place. Crazy times. Best of luck to you. I don't know. I don't see anywhere to use our souls at for uh, low length characters. I don't think we can do that. Tendency. Like, if you're looking at this, there is no character level, right? There is no character level uh, element in it. It was a souls level. That's just increased as time has gone on, right? So I don't think you actually upgrade your character. I think you level up your character as you collect souls. Like it says next is 7. So if we collect 758 souls, we're going to go up to souls level 7. And that will increase the stats automatically. Um, I think that we give ourselves boosts and things by improving our weaponry and armor and stuff. Which we can't do yet because we don't have the items to do it. So that's kind of annoying. <clears throat> so... Until we get those items to do that, souls are pretty much useless. So that's kind of an interesting uh, difference between this and, and Dark Souls. I think that Dark Souls has a better gameplay mechanic set up that way. Um, because the souls you collect are not useless until you can get those items. You can use them right off the bat. Um, but I mean, yeah, this is like the, the first, you know, kind of congealed... Game mechanics, soul game mechanics, souls game. Uh, so it's not gonna have all the like the refinements of like say Elden Ring or even Dark Souls One. Cool. All right, I think we got enough to give a, give a, an idea here of the stuff. Um, we didn't find the boss, but that's okay. Um, that was a pretty big area. Um, so let's go ahead and give this this thing a rating. So. Gameplay design. Level design's pretty good. Um, I'm not noticing anything like really obscene in terms of like like Dark Souls 2 level designs, nothing like that. Areas are really interesting, they're really thought they're well thought out. Um, it's got all the, the the trolls and stuff you would expect from a Souls like game. Uh, not Souls like, but like a, a Souls type of game. Um, uh, combat is fairly limited, but that's again, you know, you're the, it's the first game in like a genre slash franchise, so those kind of games are always going to be really rough um, in terms of like mechanics compared to older uh, later games. So you can't really compare them against the later games. Um, Um, so combat feels pretty good. Um, I wish I didn't have this stupid fat roll, but 
I guess this class just has the fat roll. There was there was a moment when I didn't have the fat roll, and I had a literal actual back roll somehow. And I don't know how, where, or why it happened. Um, I was then sweating those one guys back there. I have not been able to do the the. So we have this we have this um back jump. But what I did was an actual back roll. That was uh, decent. So maybe it's like a certain way if you com combo it or time it after a hit that you can do a proper back roll or something. Skill based like that, not sure. Oh, interesting. If you have a weapon on the left hand, the L stuff does... The L buttons do um, attacks with that. Interesting. So I've just been fighting with the uh, sword all this time. I was using both. But okay. So um, it might be it might make it worth just to put the shield back on. Then unless we get another sword, maybe if we have like the I don't know if it has like the Elden Ring mechanic where if you have two of the same weapon equipped, you attack with both, we both weapons at the same time. Um, I know it's not something in Dark Souls. So I don't think that's in this, um, but we'll have to try that out. So game mechanics wise, um, give this a seven out of ten. I think is a fair score. Art design, um, well, what can you say? It looks like it's supposed to. All the the art, the the, the level design, the architecture, the way the things look all look the way they're supposed to. Um, looks like Demon Souls, but very, very much graphically updated, which is what this is supposed to be. Um, so, uh, that said, I mean, there's still some things here that are a little bit weird. Um, this is a game from 2009, so there's going to be some sort of, some art jank kept from that time period and whatnot. Um, well, I'm going to say uh, an 8 out of 10 for art design. And uh, that includes the level design, too. Because um, there, are, there are some things like... Um, there are some places where um, the, the rooms are not what I would call movie dark. So in a game, you never... In most games, you never really want to have something that's truly dark where you can't see, where the player can't see. Um, usually... Now, there are exceptions to that. Horror games are one. You could say that Dark Souls... Or Souls games are another one where darkness is a huge factor. But you should never have, like, a completely blank, blank, uh, black, non-lit area in any kind of game. There should be some minimal source of light. And in, from what I remember in Demon's Souls, there are areas that have very, very little light, if not, none at all. Um, and... Um, I will always kind of knock down a little bit for that in any kind of game, no matter what the genre is, because you shouldn't really do that. <clears throat> Unless it's like a specific game mechanic. Like if the point of the game is you're in darkness and you have to use like light sources or lights, like lamps and flashlights and stuff like that, that's fine. But that's not this game. Um, and it's not most games, either. Um, since I'm knocking it down one peg, normally I would get, I'd probably get this normally a 9 out of 10 for that, for art design. Um, I'll give you an 8 for that. Audio, um, I, like, audio in Souls games is usually always really good. Um, they, there's a, a good focus on ambient as opposed to more kind of background trackish kind of stuff. There is some background track stuff though where it makes sense. Uh, Battles has it. There's some here in this place in the Nexus. Um, the sound effects are a little bit too high on the mix. Um, actually, really too high on the mix. I had to turn them down halfway to make them actually match the dialogue and other other sounds. Um, so that's not that's not the uh, that's not well mixed. So I'm gonna knock off a point for that. Um, otherwise, this is nine out of ten sound design. Um, story. Um, I haven't really had too much of the story so far, but the, the kind of introduction to the story um, made sense, kind of, as much as the Souls game story kind of makes sense. Um, 
I would say the Elden Ring, has, Elden Ring and maybe Bloodborne have the most complete stories out of the games, potentially. Um, but they also have like the same kind of problem that most Souls games do, which is the story isn't really fed to you in a coherent way. Um, you have to go out of your way to find things that give you the lore, right? There's no real like story quest line you're going through. It's a very much like these are very much um, limited open world games. You can go anywhere you want to, and the story kind of just happens either around you. There might be some cutscenes here or there, like in Elden Ring. Usually, you don't have cutscenes though during the main part of the game. Um, sometimes boss fights at the beginning, the bosses look kind of monologue or something or during the boss fight and give you some of the story. But a lot of times, a lot of the lore and the story is given to you through item descriptions, stuff you find on the ground, um, interactables, that kind of stuff. Um, so generally for a Souls kind of game, I'll probably give the story like a 7 out of 10. Even if it's a really good story, the way the story is delivered to you is not that good. Even though it kind of fits, it's kind of the way the game is designed, that's still, you know, even if it's designed that way, it doesn't mean you have to rate it based off the design. A design can be bad, right? Um, I think this is one place where Dark Souls as a series, as a franchise, as a genre has a huge problem, which is the delivering of the story. Um, I don't think it's necessarily bad the way they do it, but I think the bad part about it, the delivery is that it's always so vague. Um, now, that's in, like, in case of Bloodborne, that's intentional because they want you to, like, do the, like, you know, deep lore dive and, and plumb the depths of, of the insanity of Mikolash and costs and all that kind of crap. Um, at the same time, there's an item over there. How do you get to that? At the same time, um, I do think that if they give gave you the story in a more coherent way, rather than relying on reading like item descriptions of things that you find, if you just had like moments where you had actual cutscenes or actual like tribe rolling, actual. Um, actual you know, areas where um, you had story dumps, basically. Um, and I mean, NPCs give it to you too, somewhat. But in, the, in most Souls games, you don't have that many NPCs that are interactable. Um, the exception to that was Elden, Elden Ring has like a lot of NPCs that are interactable and will give you information. Usually that's not the standard. You got like maybe two or three, four or five here or there. Um... And most of the time, it's just through other means to get the story. So, um, 7 out of 10 on story for this game. Overall, um, Demon's Souls is kind of the game that started all off. Um, it punishes you through really hard gameplay. Um, and as you play through the game, you can make it harder through like, the world tendency stuff. I didn't talk about the game mechanics, but I didn't really get into that through the game. But the, the, the world tendency, as far as I remember, if you start trending toward black... It makes the game much harder in certain ways. Um, I think you do that by, like, killing humans or something. I believe. I'm not sure exactly. In the, old, in the original game, World Tendencies is a really hidden mechanic that they really don't tell you anything about. Um, and I think that it was actually discovered by players just randomly, I think. Um, in the remake, they actually have a whole thing that gives you that information, I believe. Um, I don't think that was in the original game. I could be wrong, though. I haven't played the original one for like literally 20 years or something. Well, 10 years, 11 years, something like that. <clears throat> I didn't play that much of it anyway when I did play it, so I could be totally wrong about that. Um, World Tendency is really important. Um, I think it also determines like endings or something like that, um, too, potentially. Um, yes, yeah, so overall, this game gets a 8 out of 10 from me. Um, a little bit of a bump from, you know, like I said at the beginning on the onset when we did the first one of these, the overall may not necessarily be the constituent parts of all the other categories. Um, this game is definitely a game that is greater than the sum of the whole. Um, individually, the components of the game are, you know, okay, good to mediocre at best. But when you put them all together, they are something more than they are individually. And that's definitely 
this game is definitely one of those times that that, won't, that, that happens. Um, so yeah, 8 out of 10. Um, I think it'll probably stay out of 10. It probably doesn't have much room to grow or shrink from here. Because, I mean, I, I, I'm really familiar with the Souls loop of gameplay from playing Bloodborne and um, Sekiro and all the Souls likes I played and Elden Ring. So I kind of have an idea of how, oh God, how this will progress. You know, eventually you run into bosses and they just will kill you over and over again until you uh, figure out their attack. <laughs> oh my god. I've been cursed by Miyazaki. Um, I tell you, figure out the attack patterns and whatnot. So, um, I kind of have the benefit of hindsight. Uh, I haven't played other Souls games. If this is my first time playing this game, like, and any kind of Souls game, I'd probably have rated it lower, and uh, the constituent components maybe a little bit lower. And maybe given this like a 6 out of 10 overall and said that it had room to improve. But since I know where this is going, just gameplay-wise, um, I'm going to give it what my final score would be, which is the end of 10 um, for the overall. So yeah, thanks for watching. Comments and questions, leave them below. The next game we're going to be doing is another Souls-like called The Mesia. That'll be the next episode. Um, and I will see you for that one. Until then, this is LMP Games, and I will catch you guys later.